Hello, everybody. I'm just going to let everybody trickle in and connect. Uh, give it a couple more seconds, and then uh, we will jump in to adding G reminders to your operational hub. Um, so thank you, everybody, for joining Kate and I today. Um, this is going to be super exciting. Both of us are super techie, and we love to kind of go back and forth on stuff like this. So I really appreciate everybody joining. Um, it looks like we have almost all connected. Uh, so I'll just kind of jump right in. So we are G Reminders, for those who don't know. Um, we are an end-to-end -end meeting solution where we aim to limit human error, streamline and increase your productivity, reduce no-shows, and assist in your meetings so you or your advisor can deliver the best client experience. Um, joining me in just a minute is going to be Kate Guillen. She's with Simplicity Ops, uh, lead coach and founder. She is the best of the best in RIA operations consulting. Um, Kate and I go way back, and I always love jumping on these webinars together. Um, so today, uh, as I said, we're going to be talking about adding G reminders to your operational hub. And I'll let Kate do pretty much all of the talking to that end. Um, but first, I just kind of wanted to lay some foundational knowledge and explain who G Reminders is and what we do. Uh, my name is Ziera Burkett. I'm the Partner Relationship Manager with G Reminders. A little background on me. I also come from the financial services industry. I was a marketing director for an annuity advisory for a number of years. Um, so similarly, Kate also has uh, comes from a financial services background. Um, so I think both of us are super familiar with a lot of the pain points advisors and operations teams are experiencing when it comes to not only operational processes, but scheduling and follow-up. Um, I have assisted in building many advisors CRM databases across multiple platforms like Redtail and Wealthbox. And my now current venture is, of course, G reminders and showing advisors uh, their scheduling processes don't have to be uh, this full-time job. So kind of jumping into uh, G reminders, what we are, who we do, I want to give some background knowledge to, um, to why we consider ourselves to be this end-to-end -end solution. So about a year ago, Michael Kitsis, uh, I think we all know, it's a very familiar name, uh, well-known financial planner, consultant, educator in the financial services industry, conducted this survey of a few thousand advisors and how or where they spend their time servicing clients. And what that survey had found was that a majority of the time spent by advisors surrounded either communication with clients and prep or follow-up tasks pre and post meeting. So that time averaged to be like somewhere around 13 and a half hours per client. So G Reminders ended up conducting our own survey against that same data. Uh, and we asked advisors comparatively since using G Reminders, how much time on average was saved with meeting prep, meeting follow-up, client check-ins and client correspondence, now that you've sort of been given the opportunity to automate large chunks of those manual processes. And the response was actually really overwhelming. Advisors had gone from spending 13 and a half hours to seven and a half per client per year. So um, I think a more digestible figure and uh, it is somewhere around like three to four working months per advisor given back to them. So think about what you could do with four extra months in the year, like whether that be servicing clients, uh, creating more efficient processes, being able to have the time to do that, or just the ability to take on more clients and grow your AUM. So this is really uh, the basis for G Reminders being this end-to-end -end solution. So when we talk about the first pillar or these interoperable systems, G Reminders is considered to be that end-to-end -end platform that integrates directly with your CRM and calendar. So from start to finish, we are automating these really time-consuming manual efforts. So as the advisor, you can spend 
more time delivering the best client experience and then less time on the monotonous tasks surrounding it. So that first pillar uh, is automated scheduling. It's with this that you'll cut down extensive scheduling processes and save time no longer needing to chase clients and prospects to book. The next pillar is gonna be the CRM automation ability. And this is where you'll find us as a solution to that client correspondence or those client check-ins. So our system allows you to launch workflows, um, activity templates, you can create opportunities on the opportunity tracker, you can add and update contacts, easily set the status and category for those new contacts we add to your CRM. That's gonna keep your database clean, consistent, uh, accurate. So um, all of the reminders will write back to the notes of your CRM and you can collect information uh, and write it back to the UDFs. And then that last piece of the CRM automation is automating mass scheduling. And so like, what does that mean? Um, that's those content heavy scheduling processes like automating our annual review scheduling. So some really powerful stuff there. I could talk about that until I'm blue in the face really. Um, the third pillar is reminders where we provide solutions to client correspondence, meeting prep, and meeting follow-up. So we offer reminders through various channels, right? SMS, email, phone calls. We provide a variety of notifications, including initial booking notifications, standard reminders for upcoming meetings, follow-ups post-meeting once that meeting has ended reschedule and cancellation notification. So the best part here is you can tailor all of those reminders to suit your really specific needs. So you can provide a personalized experience um, for your clients. And then lastly here is the G Reminders AI Meeting Assistant. So this is a really recently released tool and is kind of the last piece in our end-to-end -end solution. So you can allow your note taker to automatically join in on, of course, all of your virtual meetings, but also your in-person meetings. So really gone are the days of scribbling notes as fast as you can, maybe remembering all of the meeting pieces to dictate after the fact, um, or really just wasting hours <laughs> in putting notes and assigning tasks in the CRM. So GeoMiter's AI Note Taker is really made to provide that final piece of the meeting process puzzle. So we've got that pre-meeting, which is scheduling. We've got the in-meeting, which is the AI Note Taker and um, uh, some of our reminders for pre and post, and then all of the CRM automation. So we get to see all of those changes, all of those things happening in the CRM without having to live out of another platform. So it's really with all of these pillars that we create this interoperable tech ecosystem. It's because we're this end-to-end -end solution that we touch so many parts of the industry or integrate with so many different platforms within it. And all of these platforms should in some way, shape or form speak to each other, right? So if they aren't, the main question is like, what's the point? Um, and to that, I think this really falls in line with Kate's piece to this. As a firm, you have this operational hub. How is that hub impacting and interacting with the other data, tech, and elements included within it? So we do this by understanding the platforms advisors use regularly and then leveraging those platforms to not only work in tandem, but to speak directly to each other. Um, and that's going to eliminate room for human error or just even working out of so many platforms. Instead, that data is just shared seamlessly across each um, and is consistent and clean, which is really the biggest rule there, I think. Um, so sorry. Thank you, Kay, for letting me ramble a little bit. I, Like I said earlier, I feel like I could talk about this kind of thing until I'm blue in the face. Um, but I'll let you take it from here and, and jump in. Sweet. Thanks, Zim. Thanks for having me today. I'm excited to kind of share with everybody and bring to life this idea of the operational hub. And so let me start this by saying that here at Simplicity Ops, we believe that a financial advisor's number one responsibility is client service. Because if you can't attract clients and you can't retain clients, then you got no business. And we have found that the best way to deliver on that amazing client service experience is using your CRM, your client relationship management software, okay? And so what I mean by the hub is that your CRM becomes the place for contacts, tasks, your sales pipeline, your calendar, the client service experience, and then workflows to deliver that experience at 
a scale. Okay. And so what I'm going to kind of explain to you here is like the five steps for building out your hub. And then I'm going to jump into Redtail and show you what a real hub looks like. If you're not a Redtail user, fine. You can adapt this. It works for Wealthbox, Salesforce, I'm sure. Um, um, but just take the teachings and kind of adapt it to your own specific uh, CRM. But basically, if you think about it like this, your CRM in its most basic form is a database. So the foundation of an optimized CRM is the data. So you want to start with organizing the contents, the data in your database, like Z is talking about. In order to get adoption of these systems, the data in your database needs to be organized, accurate, and trustworthy. All right. Then we get into building out the hub, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And once you know like how the database is organized and everybody on your team is using the system consistently, you can get into using the CRM to deliver a proactive client service experience by you know, designing a service model on who you serve, the services you provide, and what you want that experience to feel like so that you can build systems in your CRM with you know, workflows and email templates and an online calendar tool to deliver on that experience. And then workflows and automations are how you deliver that experience at scale. And I'm going to dive into a workflow today and kind of show you how that flows. Um, and then the last piece is, like, even though I'm a big fan of CRMs, I know that your CRM can't be all the things, okay? And so once you've built out this tool to manage your internal operations, you're going to continue to find friction points, all right? And so I'm going to dive heavily into like the, the scheduling friction point, because again, my background is in client service. And I was that person that spent tens of hours a week manually scheduling. So that's a friction point that a lot of our firms feel that we can solve very easily with G reminders. But once you've optimized your CRM, I, I suggest that you get a feel for where your team is continuing to have friction points and solve that with some very simple, you know, uh, advisor tech integrations like calendaring, AI note taking, um, form filling, data gathering, anything that you can do to make your administrative team's life easier so that they can deliver an amazing client service experience, I'd recommend you do that. So that being said, Z, I'm going to jump in if that's cool. Yeah. And I'm just going to show you Redtail as an example. So I said that your CRM now is going to be your place for contacts, tasks, your sales pipeline, your calendar, notes, client service experience, workflows, all right? And so every day when I log into my CRM, I'm going to open up my calendar so I can see what in the world is going on, uh, you know, with my team and in my practice and what meetings do I have. You can see it's beautifully color coded here so I can very easily see what is going on in my day. You can see it's linked to contact records here. So now I can build out a historical timeline of everything that I've done, you know, with Dwayne over the course of our relationship, right? All of this lives in one place. Then I can open up my today page and see, you know, all of my open action items, things that I'm supposed to do today. I can see anything that maybe was hanging out past due that I need to move over to today so that I can see in one place everything that's going on in my world, all right? You can see I've assigned priorities to things so I can very easily prioritize what needs to be done first, second, third, and fourth, all right? <clears throat> and then I can see my workflows, all right? So an activity is something that needs to be done. It's an action item. Hey Z, I need you to like open up a new account. The workflow tells Z how to execute that service request, okay? So I have open both my activities and my workflows so that I can work with them kind of in tandem, all right? But the point that I'm trying to make here is I've got no more post-it notes. I've got no more legal pads. Everything, all of my action items, both client, you know, client service and operational things live in my CRM. I talked to a financial advisor the other day. It was like a post-client engagement survey. And he says, I'm really embarrassed that you're seeing me like this. I have a piece of paper on my desk. I've gotten rid of all of my paper since we started working together. But I have this one piece and it's a bad look. I know I shouldn't have paper. And I thought to myself, wow, what a huge accomplishment. He literally has gotten off of paper notes, pay, you know, legal pads for action items, no more post-it notes. That's the goal. We have one stop shop for managing our business. 
all right? So you can see now I've got my centralized calendar. I've got my tasks. I've got my workflows. I've got my contacts. So if I need to, you know, pull up a contact record, when Maggie calls in, I can very easily access her information, see who she's married to, see all of her contact info. And then, you know, for business management's sake, I want to be able to see my pipeline, see what kind of, uh, you know, prospects we have in the pipeline, where they're at in the process, keep my eyes on it to make sure things don't slip through the cracks. All right. And so that's what I mean by using your CRM as your operational hub. By centralizing all of this in your CRM, it allows you to cut down on a lot of the unnecessary external places that you're currently going to manage your business. No more, no more spreadsheets, no more DMing, no more emailing. All of it lives in your CRM. If I need to communicate something to Z about moving money, I can communicate that in the task. I don't need to text her. I don't need to shout down the hall. I don't need to email her. You're going to help her prioritize her day so much more efficiently when she's not having to toggle between her email and her DM and her texts, you know, everything lives in one place. Have I made that point abundantly clear? <laughs> now I want to show you like how to enhance this. All right. So we believe that excellent client service is highly personalized and proactive. All right. And so you can see here on Maggie's contact record, I've captured a couple things. Okay. I can see where uh, she works. You know, I can capture hobbies and interests and things so that I can relate to her on a personal level. But I also want to apply a service experience to her based on, you know, her segment within our book of business. And we basically said that, you know, because she's a tier one client, we're going to meet with her twice a year. We're going to check with her, check in on her, you know, in between the that meeting cadence. She's going to be invited to our client events. Okay. We've designed a client service experience and tailored it to these tier one clients, which includes proactive client meetings. All right. And so we have found that the best way to execute on that and deliver this proactive experience without having to reach out individually to every single one of my tier one clients is to be able to group them together, use an email template and email an invitation, which is a G reminders link, inviting them in for, you know, whatever type of meeting this is. Today, I'm going to show you basically like the internal workings of G Reminders, how um, I use it to schedule individual meetings, and the importance of having individual meeting links for each different type of meeting that you have because of the automation capabilities that Z was talking about. All right. So here is, you know, the, the G Reminders interface. I've gone to my event types here, and you can see that I built out individual links for each different type of meeting that I have. And the reason this is important we break down our new client onboarding process or our prospecting process by individual meetings. First, we have a qualifying phone call, an intro call. Then we have a discovery meeting. Then we prepare a plan. And then maybe they want to come in to sign paperwork. We have an implementation meeting. And then we have all of our onboarding and a new client welcome meeting. Okay, you get the picture here. But the reason we break it down this way, well, first, having one long prospecting workflow doesn't work. There are too many variables. There are too many outcomes. It becomes really cumbersome uh, and not usable. It is very rare that I find that a prospect follow this process perfectly. All right. From, from meeting one to meeting five. All right. We need to allow for the flexibility that those prospects deserve in this process. So I have found that by chunking it out into individual meetings, it allows you to jump forward or go back or have the same meeting twice. It also allows you to capitalize on the G Reminders Redtail or G Reminders Wealth Box integration that has automation capabilities. So by having an individual workflow, let me backtrack. For so for having an individual yeah, workflow for each different type of meeting that you have, it allows you to create corresponding meeting links. So Let's say, you know, I want to have Maggie in for an introductory call. She reached out, you know, said she heard good things about us and we want to start the prospecting process. I can send her my meeting link. All right. I can copy it, send it in my email. For this example, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to schedule on her behalf. I've got her on the phone. She knows her schedule. And I can very easily pop open my G reminders 
Let me get Maggie's email address. Pop open my G reminders, get her contact information, confirm her email, put in her phone number, select whether or not it's going to be in person, Google, uh, Zoom. What else, Z? What other, what other, all the, all the online Skype teams. Yeah. Yeah. I could have selected here. All right. So I'm going to schedule this on Maggie's behalf. Let her know she's going to get a confirmation email in just a second. And like Z saying, not only is she going to get the confirmation email that she can push this, you know, um, this meeting to her online calendar. She's also going to get a text reminder and an email reminder, whatever. I, I do them like 24 hours in advance or morning of or whatever. But you can set up those reminders so that your admin team is not having to confirm these meetings anymore. This is how you get all of those hours back in your week, all right? So I'm gonna schedule this for Maggie. All right, so she can you know, push it to her calendar, whatever. She's gonna get the email confirmation. The beautiful thing that I love so much is now when I go back to my calendar, what do you know? I've got my introductory call with Maggie scheduled for Wednesday morning, all right? And when I open this guy up, you can see you know, the name of the meeting, who it's with. It's linked for reporting purposes to my meeting types and categories. So now I, I can report on how many introductory calls have I had this month? Uh, who were they with? I can filter my calendar to see just introductory calls, okay? You can see that the location is a, is a Google meeting. You can see all of the information here. If you have a questionnaire in place asking details about what they want to talk about or any you know meeting specific information, that's all going to live there. It links me as the attendee because I'm the person facilitating the meeting and it links Maggie's contact record. So now I can build out that historical timeline. This is meeting number one with Maggie and her family. And now you know when I go to her contact record, I'm going to be able to have a record in one centralized place of all of the meetings, all of the phone calls, all the client service stuff that we've ever done for Maggie's family. All right. This is a dream come true for me. I'm a I'm somebody that you know used Calendly for years and years, and it worked fine. There was a big lag in getting it to the Redtail calendar, and you had to link all of those things and link it to the contact manually. So that is completely solved using this tool. And now something that's real sweet is. Excuse me. I can see now Maggie's upcoming introductory call on the surface of her contact record. And when I scroll down here, what do you know? I've got the workflow. And the workflow looks something like this. A couple days before, Courtney on my team, my you know, a, a client service associate, is going to make sure the call is on the calendar, that it's linked to all the things that it needs to be linked to, make sure it's clean and tidy, complete it. Uh, if the target date, so this is something to know about workflows, when you create a workflow template for meetings, the target date of that workflow is the date of the meeting. G Reminders is smart enough to recognize that I scheduled this meeting for the 14th and what do you know? It links the target date, all right? So no target dates need to be updated here. We're gonna keep rolling. Now the day of the meeting, I'm the advisor in this example. The day of the meeting, I'm gonna get a, uh, a task here that asks me, the advisor, is the prospect qualified? And one of the cool things about workflows, it allows you to come to a fork in the road. After this introductory call, there's gonna be one of two outcomes. Either they are qualified or they are not qualified. And there's a checklist or you know, subsequent workflow steps here that take us down either one of those paths. Hopefully most people that you talk to are qualified, so I'm gonna use that as my example today. But I'm gonna say this prospect is qualified, let's keep rolling on. Oh boy, here's all of the post-meeting stuff that needs to happen, all right? I gotta send a follow-up email, I have to make sure that we get notes on the contact record, if there's any follow-up tasks for myself or my team, we need to piece all of those out. We need to update their contact record with any new information that we've captured during this meeting. We need to update our opportunity tracker to show this new prospect in our pipeline. Okay, I'm gonna run you through this really quick and then Z and I are gonna debate on a couple of tools here that you can use to 
standardize this and make it even easier, all right? So one of the things that I like here is in my send follow-up email, I can literally go to Maggie's contact record. Uh, what's her name? Maggie Investor. And I can shoot Maggie an email directly from her, her email. Mm, okay, maybe not because this isn't a real database. But if it was a real database, it would allow me to select one of these email templates. And my workflow prompts me and tells me you need to use the 1A post intro call. All right, so I'm going to go to my um, 1A post intro call. Okay, I could copy and paste it or I could fire it off directly from Maggie's contact record. You know, basically a, a thank you for their time. Here's some additional information that we need for the upcoming meeting. Insert the calendar link. And so we know that the next meeting and our meeting sequence is the discovery meeting. So I'll go back to my G reminders. I would copy the, um, the meeting link. Oh, here we go. Copy the meeting link, embed it in the email, fired off to the client or fired off to the prospect. All right. Go back to Maggie's contact record. Did what I needed to do there. Add meeting notes to the prospect's contact record. So if you are not using an AI tool, um, you can use note templates in your CRM and just plug and play the information. We have been using FinMate as our AI tool that does something similar to what Z is talking about. It takes your, takes your notes, prepares a meeting summary, pushes it into Redtail as a note with action items that we can piece out and prepares an email follow-up summary. So, you know, you've got two options here. Either use the note template or push the FinMate summary. Z is your tool. I imagine it's something we could put in here to do something similar. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, the, it would kick out a meeting summary for you that you can then edit and uh, push it into the notes, as well as action items, you can assign them to users within your Redtail database, whether they're G Reminders users or not. So point being here, we can probably get rid of this pretty darn soon. Everybody should be using a uh, note taking tool to create more efficiency in your life. Same thing with the follow-up tasks, right? If I hover over this, you can see, you know, activity templates that we can use to like make adding notes easier. But if you use an online tool um, like FinMate or G Reminders, you can piece out the action items from the post meeting summary, all right? Then we wanna update their important information with anything new that we've captured from the meeting, update their contact record. You know, if, um, let me go back to Maggie's as an example. As these relationships, as you uh, you know advance in these relationships, you're going to be able to capture more information. You're going to be able to capture you know spouses' information. You know who were they referred by? Um, you know what are their some of their hobbies or interests? Okay, we can start to apply you know their their service model here. All right, but this is just your reminder to update their contact record with any new information. And then the opportunity tracker. I showed you a little bit earlier, but our opportunity tracker is where, where we are going to track new revenue opportunities. So we need to put Maggie's family in here as a new opportunity so that we can show we've got another you know, million dollar opportunity on the horizon. And each one of these workflows, as we progress in our you know, prospecting journey, um, we are, the follow-up steps are going to look very similar to this so that we can show this opportunity moving up, you know, to the one yard line, hopefully becoming full-fledged clients. We're going to update the writing advisor and servicing advisor. On Maggie's contact record, you have the ability to assign like a lead advisor and an associate advisor so that you can show track metrics like who brought in the business, who's the person servicing the business, and who's the client service person on your team that's going to be, um, you know, servicing the household. Right. Then for the sake of like standardization so that we can continue to track on these metrics, we also want to track the referral source. Was it a COI? Was it a client? Be able to track this information so that, you know, I see people like, oh, I really want, you know, let's let's send a thank you to our most frequent referral sources. All right. This is how you can track that kind of information or track, you know, whether a seminar or marketing effort was fruitful. All right. 
But the reason you go through this long like post meeting process is to standardize these steps. And the same thing here, we wanna send a thank you card to the person that referred us, whether it's an email template or a card, we save those templates in your CRM so that we're not reinventing the wheel every single time we have an introductory call, all right? So all's good here. What needs to happen next? Well, we send an invitation to have them in for a discovery meeting. It's not good enough to just send the invitation. We actually want to confirm that, in fact, that discovery meeting is scheduled so that we you know, keep on top of this new revenue opportunity. OK, so Courtney, the service associate is going to confirm again, fork in the road one way or another. If it's not scheduled, this workflow is going to loop. It's going to come back to. Uh, you know, reach out to the prospect and and re uh, uh, offer our G reminders link. So we've got an email template in there. We'll copy the G reminders link. We'll send it back out to the prospect to ensure that the meeting is scheduled. For the sake of this example, I'm just going to keep running through this. So the next thing that needs to happen is Courtney. <clears throat> we confirmed that the meeting was scheduled, and I have Courtney on this workflow just to double check G reminders work. No offense, G reminders. I trust you. But uh, this comes from the, the old PTSD days of using Calendly and other systems. I just want to double check that, in fact, the next meeting is scheduled, that the next meeting, uh, the workflow has, in fact, been launched with that G Reminders automation. Once it's all good, we're going to complete this step and let the, the G Reminders automation that has triggered my discovery meeting workflow do its thing. And it's going to look very similar to this. The prep, the day of, the follow-up, schedule the next meeting in the sequence where I will go back to my G reminders and select the next meeting in the sequence and let the thing keep rolling. Something it, um, <laughs> to, uh, yeah, something to point out there in your workflow as you were going through it, I just thought how interesting um, the most content heavy step in your workflow was that post introductory meeting, all those tasks. And um, yeah, as you were going through them, I not only remember, that process myself and how extensive that is coming from that. Um, but how I think you had like 10 tasks there and of those six of them are automated by G reminders. So what those tasks can turn into rather than actually having to do those actionable items, you're instead just using that workflow to, as Kate said, double check G reminders work. Did we update sure. all the information in the contact? Yes. Did we send, do we have the ability to send a follow-up email from our meeting? Yes. Did you uh, collect information? Uh, did we, uh, you know, I think the only things you'd really have to do there are assign the servicing advisor, you know, and that's really just to, you know, understand ownership, but every yeah. other, you know, part of that step, that one step alone, which I mean, anybody who works through a process typically like this, it's a lot of data entry. It does take a lot of time, you know, and, and what is the point of that instead just being able to look into your CRM and say, oh yeah, that was done. I don't have to do that. So it, it cuts down considerably. Considerably. And the, the, like you're saying, the workflow is just kind of like your, your guardrails to make sure that right. like all of the stuff did in fact happen, but um, you know, one of the, the pieces of like pushback that I get when I work through a workflow like that is like, my God, Kate, that's a lot of clicking. I'm like, yeah, for sure it is. But do uh, you know what's more clicking is like the termination of a client because you're not, you know, staying in front of them and you're not communicating proactively. Uh, and so what I do is I just set myself a reminder to check my workflows like midway through the day and at the end of the day. And because of the automations and because of the things G reminders can do, I just like look at that workflow and I'm like, Done, 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 done. Or you can right. say you can complete the step with one click. I just use it as my safety net to make sure that I did, in fact, do everything I said I was going to do. Yeah, continuity. Like you know. yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's client experience. You know, that's delivering the best client experience because it's consistent. So your clients always have an expectation rather than you know, sometimes they get to talk to this advisor, sometimes they get to talk to this advisor, but it's the same person. They just have a million different processes because it's not, there's no continuity, there's no consistency. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with that, uh, Kate, we did have, I had a question for you. Um, yeah. Somebody asked, are the workflows that you showed, are those already templates in Redtail um, that they can have added to their account? They are not, but if you want to, 
send me an email. I can send you the whiteboarding document um, and, and get you started on that workflow journey. No problem. Um, I, I didn't see too many more questions come in, but I mean, we can chat for a second while we kind of wait. Um, I, uh, if anybody is interested in uh, getting a more granular look and kind of going into the G Reminders platform to really see everything that can that I can do, uh, you can feel free. This is my direct meeting link. Um, you can book 30 minutes with me. It's free. We can talk about your operational processes. Kate and I work very well together. We chat all the time about this sort of thing. Every time we make a change to the G Reminders platform, she's three sets of steps ahead of me talking about, okay, how operationally are we going to implement this? And like, this is the best way I would do it. Um, so totally a resource. I, uh, I'm always eager to learn how advisors are using our platform or using other systems. Um, and maybe we can kind of figure out where we fit in. So um, yeah, you can book with me directly here and, and uh, yeah. And same, same thing here. Thank you for including the Z. If you guys want to talk shop, dig into your operations, I'm happy to provide some feedback. If you want to schedule a call, if you're not ready to schedule a call, she included a link to our community here. We have a free community of RIA owners and operators and a couple of like key advisor tech uh, partners, Z being one of them. Um, if you want to join our community, stay in touch, collaborate with other people similar to you, it's kind of blossomed into a cool collaborative spot if um, y'all want to keep in touch. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kate. Uh, I didn't see too many other questions come in, so I really appreciate everybody's time. Kate, I always appreciate being able to sit with you. Um, I think I say it every time, but I always learn so much after we do one of these. Um, and I know I'll take a lot of these things and uh, apply them to my own practices in general. So thank you so much for sitting with me and uh, for everybody else joining. This was great. Um, really welcome. great. Have a Thank good you. afternoon. Thanks, everybody.